Hello and welcome, my grave titans. My greeting was a hint as to who today's interview is. Can you guess? Well, of course you can. It would be a silly thing to do, as I'm assuming you clicked on this video because you are a fan of the multi-talented MTG artist, Lucas Graciano. So let's see what he has to say. <laughs> so well, it's nice um, to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Sure. Um, so I guess the first thing that I have to ask is, um, you, I heard that in the beginning of your career, like you had, you had started out with some, something to do with Legoland. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Um, early on, right out of high school, I, I, um, applied to do portraiture and caricatures at Legoland. And I worked there for a couple of years before I got getting my art training. And I, I gotta admit, I always thought that Legoland might've been like not actual Legos. Like I thought that it might've been like another country that had a similar sounding name. I always thought I was too scared to ask like, oh, is that really like Lego Legos? Is that Lego <laughs> Legos? Yeah, it's Lego Legos. They, there's oh, really? know, three, or, three or four theme parks in the world. Um, I think Denmark is the central hub one. And then uh. um, they built one over here like 20 minutes from my house. And, uh, you know, it was a good start as far as doing the caricatures. I didn't work. It was a separate company I worked for. We were a third party working inside Legoland. But um, yeah, it was a good stepping stone. <laughs> yeah, and, and I feel so stupid because I thought like, you know, it, it could be like the name of a small like place in Africa. You know what I mean? Like, I just, <laughs> yeah, that's what like, it could be. Still. You know, I, other languages, but, um, but I digress. Uh, so um, would you mind giving everybody sort of a brief, brief recap of what you're uh, like stepping into professional art was your background and then what kind of led you to stepping into that, the, the world of magic. Sure. Um, so it, it all started at Legoland. I mean, I always liked to draw as a kid and um, you know, it's just one of those things. I grew up with looking at the magazines that like Frank Rosetta had artwork in and Boris Vallejo and it inspired me, made a mark on me as a kid. And then um, out of high school, you know, I dabbled. I was always one of the, the kids in class that just like to draw on all this stuff. Um, but out of high school, I, I got um, that job at Legoland. I was able to do characters for a couple of years. Um, and that's where I heard about the school I went to, the art school. It's a trade school here in Encinitas uh, near San Diego. Um, and, I'm going to mispronounce it, but how do you pronounce it again? Because it's, I think it's French sounding last name. Uh, Watts, the name is uh, Watts Atelier. Atelier. Jeff Watts runs it. And Atelier is a French name. Uh, term for like a private studio or a one-on-one -on -one, kind of a close intimate uh, setting for artists and uh, you know apprentices and stuff mm -hmm. um so from um the legolands where i actually heard about the school i, I went to the school for a couple of years um it's to make a long story short i was there for about four years and then i got hired on to teach as well as during that time, I had done some work at Sony, working as a conceptual designer, doing visual development stuff. You got hired to teach right right out of, of, of school? You got hired to teach? Yeah, well, so it's a really intimate school, small. We're all close friends. Um, the owner, Jeff Watts, he keeps his teachers very um, close as far as they're all homegrown. We've had people come in and want to do teaching, but Jeff says, you know, it, it's, it's more of a family thing in a way. That's so, cool. Um, that's that's like a that is really like a unique way of keeping you guys uh, sort of like getting each other's backs. It really is. It's a it's a really fun. We're all friends and um, we all have a very similar idea about artwork or, or how uh, building a skill in art and trying to get good. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those really good experiences. I, I'm still with the school. I still teach one day a week. I've been there for 20 years um, and it's or one class a term rather. Um, and it's, it's just great. I, I really enjoy being a part of the school and uh, help. It gives me a chance to give back to the school a little bit in, in teaching um, way of having some extra social time outside of the studio. And it's just right. a good, good thing. And how else are you going to really get a chance to talk about art with other artists on a, like, I mean, college is great for that. You're, you're around everybody who is uh, sharing a headspace with you. And then when college is over, it's sort of like there's a heartbreak that happens where you're like, okay, I, I'm not going to be able to discuss Nietzsche over coffee at work <laughs> kind of thing. Right. So yeah. you, Our, this was a bit different because it was it's a trade school. So, and I had been there so long. I mean, I was taking classes as I was teaching as well. And 
um, you, over the course of the 20 years I've been there, you see these waves of people come and go. There's kind of like these groups that form and then they start to trickle out and go to work or, or just stop going. And, and then it kind of changes as a new group of people that come in. And it's, it's really interesting. Um, what would, what would be some patterns that you saw, like in artists, young artists that you've seen over the years? Um, patterns? Well, like you say that there's groups that come in, I'm assuming like maybe there's certain types of art that are, I don't know if maybe certain uh, forms of, uh, or expressions uh, of oh, art are, are popular or whatnot. I mean, just uh, curious. Yeah. So the, the school is, it's a foundation driven school. So we teach people the, the foundation of learning to draw and paint and they can kind of go do with it what they want. If we got people in the school who are kind of going towards illustration, it was usually because of Eric or myself, because that's where we work. We worked in magic and, and uh, we worked on the Warcraft stuff and Eric's now doing comics. So we tend to get people who gravitate towards the school um, for illustration because of us. But the, a huge market of the school is uh, fine artists, too. So we get a lot of the, the people around the area that come in and take classes to paint you know, a portrait or still lifes or something where it's more gallery driven. Um, but more than anything, it's the foundation. You get a really strong um, uh, grounding of how to learn that craft of drawing or painting and then whatever you want to do with it. You know, when I first came to the school, I was thinking, oh, I want to do concept design. This is going to be cool. I can learn from whoever the instructor was that was that was built in that that kind of area and get my portfolio built. Go get a go get a job and then you can uh, you can kind of do what you'd like to do um, at, at, for me. Concept. I thought it was, it was a little more romantic than I thought it was, than it actually was. So I came in, did concepting for a couple of years with Sony and just, it was a grind for me. I'm not really built for a concept designer. And um, I changed gears a little bit. I, I switched gears and, and started working towards illustration, which I felt was much more my pace and my mentality. Um, working on a single image as opposed to creating hundreds of ideas, I can maybe develop a few work it up into a nice finished piece like Magic the Gathering work. And that was more my temperament. I think I was able to, to fit in better there. Yeah. You had said in, in some other interviews that, that um, doing other people's IPs has, uh, has its, its, its good sides and its bad sides. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it seems like from what you're saying, the good side part of it is that you are, you're good at taking an established world and bringing it to life. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than the idea of creating a whole new world. But right. uh, is that, um, is a question I had about that was, I know you had said that sometimes it's one of the best assignments you ever got was when somebody said, I think it was just draw a dragon, a dog and a girl, I think were the <laughs> And yeah. um, uh, so I'm wondering, has there ever been a time where you were given a lot of parameters to work on a certain piece and those parameters actually accidentally ended up making stronger or better? Well, that's a good question. Um, I, you know, it's hard to say. I'm, I'm, you know, you kind of, that assignment in particular with a dog, I think it was just the right amount. And maybe it was the right spot in my career as well, where I was kind of starting out and um, I was able to kind of develop my look and um, how I was going to paint and uh, kind of what my mentality was about creating art. Um, I feel like that piece in particular was the right, it was just the right uh, storm of everything, perfect storm of everything coming in and, and uh, the right amount of, of uh, parameters to build within, um, my own inspirations, and like I said, where I was at, and it just, it created this, this fun image, and it's something I've only hit maybe a couple of times in, in my whole career. Um, when you work on someone else's IP, there's advantages because you are you got usually have consistent work like Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. um, once you're magic artists, I mean, assuming you're still doing good work, and you're turning your work on time and you're professional, um, they're going to keep hiring you back. Uh, they, they've got a bunch of work that needs to get done. And, you know, there's there's so many artists out there. You, that, you, a lot of the newer sets has a lot of newer artists. They're trying out people. They're trying to see who else they can get in because it's just growing. It's gotten so big. It's huge. And it's really it's huge. huge. So I'm thankful that I got in when I did and I have a grounding in my skills that allows me to do a lot of variation of things. So you'll see me doing characters, people, but you'll see me doing creatures and then environments and yep. landscapes. So I think that foundation I had gotten early on in my career was, was uh, really beneficial to me. Um, so 
you know, I think that's why I've been able to work with Magic for so long. And it's such a great client. Uh, they kind of fit what I like to do already anyway. So um, the brand is great. The people are great. We're all friends. And um, yeah, we've all seen each other come up. Like Cynthia, she's my art director. Most One of the art directors at Wizards. I saw her when she was a student. She came into LuxCon and, and wow. bought some prints. And, you know, we, we chatted. We got to know each other before her career really took off. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's really neat to kind of, it's a tight community. Yeah. Like to watch some, I mean, but, but you're not, you're, I mean, but you seem to, you got started, I guess you were really successful or you got a lot of, um, uh, got a lot of movement, uh, very early. It seems cause you're, you can't be, you can't be oh, like, you gotta be under 40. You have to be, I mean, otherwise you're, there's a secret you're not telling. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, uh, you can get those grays coming in here. Uh, but I'm 41 and uh, I'd started with magic in 2009. I think my first set was M11, which came out in 2010. And I, it usually takes about a, eight months to a year before those art, that artwork comes out. Um, so I think M11 was my first set 2009. And then what is it? 221. So 20. I could get my calculator out, but I, I will fail if I don't. Yeah. So I'm about 12. 10, 12, 12 years in with magic. Um, and I had other clients that I was working with also book covers. And I did work for world of Warcraft card game for a while, um, which has since become hearthstone. Um, I did not work on hearthstone when it was hearthstone, but, um, my first, I think my first illustration was a digital illustration I did for world of Warcraft when upper deck ran the, when they, they ran the, uh, the game. Um, I, it was, that client was hard because it was a, for my style of work, you, I mean, you guys know what Hearthstone looks like. It's it's a little bit more stylized, more cartoon like. Mm -hmm. And um, I was swimming upstream the whole time, and it was really tough on me. So I was able to eventually segue into Magic. You know, the art directors that were nice enough to uh, to give me a chance, and uh, been working on it pretty much ever since. Yeah. Um. By the before I forget, do you know the name of the piece with the uh, the three uh, the dog, the girl, on uh, the um the dragon uh, by chance because i'm curious to know which one it is not not to uh you know like put you on the spot but i just love hearing these right well the name actually changed a couple times it was it was a, a really bad name for a long time um was it called guardianship or something like that and then like reflecting on that for a few years I was like that late name is so dumb <laughs> <laughs> um so i changed it what did i change it to did you see it online somewhere? No, no. I just heard you oh. talk about it. I, I, in fact, I have no idea what it looks like. You know, I cannot remember what I named it, like with the new name. I have it up on my site. I mean, I, I will have to, it. we will call it Untitled. That's Untitled. There we go. Okay. There is a name for it. I just cannot remember what I did, what I ended up titling it back as. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Better than Guardianship. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, 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 uh, I was, I'm not good at naming things anyway, like, except for dogs, but you know. But uh, in any case, um, so the thing that I also want to ask about is you on the side are doing ma maquettes and, and you do ceramics. Like, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> like, is there anything that you're not good at with art? Like, is there uh, any? I appreciate that. I, you know, I'm questionably I'm good at pottery. I'm not, this is something I picked up. I did it all through high school and it was something that really stuck with me and I always wanted to pick it up again. And I finally got to a point in my life where I felt like I could maybe spend an hour a day or half hour a day before I get to work and, and just go out and throw a pottery, a, you know, throw a vessel. Um, and it's fun. I, I've had fun going onto YouTube and seeing all these new techniques. And uh, I've got an old high school friend who's who uh, he's been doing it for 20 years. And he's like, dude, come over. We're going to fire up your stuff. We're going to teach you all this stuff. So I'm going to try to spend some time doing that with him every once in a while. You know, it'd be really nuts if you like did, if you did some, like you did a piece and then drew art on it. I don't know. Cause you know how like magic is sort of like branching out to like the crazy, like sort of um, alternate art kind of worlds. I, yeah. I it'd be, yeah. it, it'd be fun. I mean, I, I would love to see that kind of stuff, but then that seems kind of torturous, but, um, but I, I <laughs> just <laughs> throwing it out that there. So, yeah. So yeah. um, what, like Frank Frazetta and uh, Waterhouse, those are, I would imagine you could describe them as the great, like the grandfathers, the great masters of art. I'm curious to know who you think the great mothers of art would be, who are Ooh, some of the people that question. you look up to. There are so many 
good women to paint. And um, especially today, I mean, Carl Ortiz, Cynthia is an amazing painter. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Claire Wendling. I love her sketch yeah. work. Um, there are a lot of people, a lot of new women that are coming up that are just phenomenal. Yeah, it's uh, they're knocking it out of the park right now. It seems like there is a surge of of women coming into the scene, and that's it's it's starting to sort of the, the playing fields are leveling out leveling out a little bit. Yes, and I think that's such a good thing. Um, and they've they've been there. I mean, Cynthia has yes. been doing this almost as long as I have, if not about the same time. Um, Carla is just she's in the mix. She's doing so well. We we were we run a, a workshop for Watts where we bring out a guest illustrator. We were supposed to have, we got Carla to confirm for um, this year, but it was COVID. So we had to cancel it, unfortunately. Oh, um, we did have Cynthia out, uh, usually the year before or the one before that, but she came out, did an awesome job. It was great having an art director from Magic be able to come out and do that. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're all friends. Um, and it, she was happy, I think, to get out of the studio and have some time with the with uh, some friends and some students and uh, kind of share some of her, her knowledge. What would be a mantra that you like, in, in a sense of meaning something that you always try to impart to any of your students in your classes, something that you repeat in every course, regardless of what the class is about? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of different things that I'll teach at the school from figure drawing to illustration to perspective, you know, all sorts of different things. Um, and it can change. I guess it's just a foundation, building a good foundation in drawing, uh, that, that ability to be able to do a lot of different things at a, at a pretty good level. Because I feel like for me, like I said earlier, it helped me be successful in the sense that I could do a lot. I had a process of, even though I'd never painted a, a I don't know, a, a, a troll coming out of a sewer or whatever, I, I had a process I could use to get there. And um, I feel like that's, that's helped help me stay in the game a bit longer. Do you, um, do you, when you get the ideas, like for instance, like behind me, the vengeful uh, vampire that mm -hmm. I had not noticed for the longest time that he had all the lacerations on his back. And then <laughs> I read that you had said that you were inspired to have his sort of story be that he was uh, tied down because there's cuffs. On, I, I, there, see, uh, he's got, yeah. he's been cuffed <laughs> and he was shackled and he was being tortured and then he got escaped. And then as soon as the sun sets, he's going to go and just like, you know, take his, take it out on them. Right, um, yeah. Was that part of the card description or was that something you came up with? And, and I, I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. You know, that one was done so long ago. Um, if I remember correctly, it was probably part of the description um, to have the lacerations. And um, I maybe took it a little step further with the, the cuffs and, and thought, well, how, that's something I like to try to do to give me an, an assignment. They say that it, it needs to have this. And then I think a little bit more about the world you know, what happened to him, you know, a couple of days before, maybe what's going to happen a couple of days after and how, how to kind of dive into that character and, and, and build a little bit more story hints. So the cuffs were a little bit of an added, like, well, he'd probably been, you know, tied up. And it's and, great. Yeah. It makes so, him go from being a villain to being somebody who is a sympathetic character. Right. Right. Yeah. And I always like that. I like that kind of gray area, you know, right. Kind of Game of Thrones characters where it's just like one, one chapter you hate that person the next chapter you're rooting for them and it's like okay mm -hmm. yeah except for, Cerise, except for cersei it's just i don't i kept i you know, i want to <laughs> but no i don't really want to just she seems pretty like kind of not nice not nice lady but um not likely and there's probably like one or two characters in there where you're kind of like all right that person is straight villainous yeah but, yeah uh, yeah for the most part there's characters that that show up villainous and you're kind of like man this person is really bad he pushed a boy out a window yeah. And then by the fourth chapter, you're like, go Jamie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh, man. I don't even get me started on that. The Red Wedding, I was, that was, I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> that was a bad day for me. Um, so the um, duress. Now, the, the story behind that was you said it was an immediate click, like that, that you were just, you were so set on that idea that you came up with that you almost had to press yourself to come up with the second one. Um, mm -hmm. What other cards has that happened to you with uh, throughout your career? Oh, geez. Um, 
probably several of them. You know, most of the time what I'll do is I'll get the description. I immediately get an image in my head. Uh, sometimes it's the one, you know, sometimes, most of the time I, I, I try to feel it out, find out what the best solution is going to be. Um, but sometimes like duress, it just, I had that image in my head. I put it out. I still did other ones. And then that was the one I was like, you know what, that's that one's first instinct was right. Um, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it's, you get that initial instinct and it might be an inspiration from another piece of artwork or a movie or something that you'd seen before um, that was maybe a little too close. So I needed to find my own way and, and try to make it my own. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, it is disturbing looking and it certainly is a definition of duress. Um, <laughs> and then the little changes that you made where the, the original, uh, I guess the, the sort of, uh, digital version that you did first the eyes were much wider and then they they were brought down and sort of like pinpointed um Mm. when when do you like when does that kind of change come across like how does that happen uh because for you know somebody like me they both look awesome I wouldn't Mm. know you know those choices to make so I'm curious about that so what I do is I um I I before I um shoot reference um, and so when I'm submitting the rough sketch, I, I'll just do it by memory or just from um, purely my mind. So I don't shoot any reference. I might gather a couple things here and there on Google to help make it a little bit more readable if I, if I come across something I have a tr- I'm have having trouble conveying. But for the most part, it's all invented work in my initial sketches. Once the sketch is approved, then I'll spend my time and my money and energy going and getting reference. Uh, whether it's hiring a model or, you know, building a maquette or something like that, then I'll be able to get more accurate um, information, details. So that's why maybe the eyes felt maybe a little bit smaller in the finish because I had gotten reference and I did it correctly. (laughs) Oh, is that, I mean, see, but that wouldn't be something that I would even uh, have noticed because it's not like they were uh, cartoonishly big. It's just the difference between somebody who is like, terrified and then somebody who is sort of just like uh, almost catatonic uh it was just it was i mean they're both they both they both work i'm just right. curious like as to how that that comes about um well, that's interesting that you asked that because i i've never thought of it that way and, and you're the first person who's asked me about it so um but yeah that's a good question because I, I do feel like the initial sketches i submit are usually a little bit more cartoony if you really will, or it's, a, it's a little bit less realistic I like to find somewhere between, you know, something somewhat realistic, something stylized. Um, there's other artists, I think, who do it really well. Um, but for me, I like a little bit more of a grounded work, mm-hmm. um, something that looks like it could have existed. Yeah, there, there is an element of sort of like the art, the arch that you can do tongue in cheek, if you will, with Magic the Gathering. I mean, it, it's mm-hmm. there. I mean, yes, there are some pieces that are just like dark or, mm-hmm. or his, you know, or straight up funny, but then there, then there's, you know, most of the time it's sort of kind of like doing a, a, a little bit of a mix and throwing it in there. Um, like what would be, I'd say, I looked at all, you've done pretty much every type of card as far as creatures, sorceries. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the really cool ones was insult and injury. Um, that the, the, you had, it looks like the Minotaur is, is screaming. Oh, yes. yep. And now is the, was that a language that was made up for Amonkhet that you painted in? Or those symbols? Like, what was, what was that? I wish I could tell you it said something, but it's, it's mainly... So what I'm trying to do is stay within the shape language of that set. So I needed them to look somewhat Egyptian, but not Egyptian. It's magic Egyptian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you kind of just take some of the shape language that's in the... You'll get a style guide. And uh, this is a group of artists who go and develop the look of the set before it comes out. So I'm just going through that, getting inspiration from different lettering or, or symbols or things that I see within the style guide and doing my take on them and trying to make them, you know, feel like it's some kind of magic spell coming out and, and, and having that, those hieroglyphs. It's, it's incredibly, uh, it's an incredibly cool piece because of yeah. the, the, uh, also, it's the way you portrayed it, but, but also the, the, the subtext of how words are weapons is really cool. Uh, mm-hmm you just you expect it to be something more traditionally you know violent insult injury you think okay perfect way to show some you know graphic stuff but that one that one took it back and it's it's um interesting but since you've done every type of card i wonder 
are there any like I, I'd be curious to see you do a planeswalker. Is there anything that you have not done that you'd be curious to try out in the world of magic? Um, I haven't done. In fact, I put in a request. I, I want to do an angel. I've never done an angel. Um, part of me is because I, you know, I think it'd be fun to do that armor and the wings. It'd be the character would be really neat, but also to have a card because usually angel cards are really good and powerful, and um, you know, it, it helps an artist if if they have a really good strong card in the set. Right. So, right an angel a planeswalker i would love to do a planeswalker um it's taboo to ask for planeswalker so i'm not going to ask it, but well it's one of those I, things that i think you have to earn it you know really like right now they have like ryan pankos doing a lot of them chris ron's done a lot and those guys kill it those are top notch probably the best you're going to get um in this field um you know tyler jacobson's been doing a bunch and he's phenomenal he's kind of helps develop the look overall of everything that wizard has done he's done a lot of the dnd um conceptual stuff and visual development um so i don't know maybe a matter of time um sometimes i'll 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 do something where i try to like really spend some extra time in like a face or something showing like hey i can do a face you know? yeah you, i've i've seen your you know i've like a lot of times especially the the you when you take the time to do these single characters that are posing i mean like they they're good i mean they're 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 rich um I, I, if you can't, you can't ask for it, but I can. So if anybody up there is listening, <laughs> yeah. Like, can we please get a uh, planeswalker? That would it, be nice. It just but would again, be. It's the thing is art directors have got so many artists that they're working with. And they're, like I said, there's people out there who are really good that are, are going to help make that brand shine when it needs to like planeswalkers, like the box art. Um, and they need that. I mean, it's, it's nothing i don't i don't blame any of them because I, I would have a really tough time picking as well you know if I was oh, an art director. yeah no i don't think that i'm not blaming per se i'm just thinking like you know like <laughs> just a little planeswalker here a little planeswalker there <laughs> yeah, um, i'm sure it'll come eventually assuming i'm still working with magic but oh uh, uh, you guys you just, I'm i've talked to so many of you guys like i that you say that assuming i'm still working with magic i'm like they ain't letting you go i mean you i guys, don't know man there's you should see and the people that they're bringing in it's like every you know decade or so there's a whole other level <laughs> you're just like oh man i need to step it up and see uh, but that's it, that's what's great about you guys is that you all you sort of challenged you guys are challenged oh, by sure. each other and yet sure. um there's 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 a great amount of respect for one another that you have which is Absolutely. really truly remarkable you don't really see that kind of that kind of uh, like tight knit closeness in any sort of industry. There's a lot of backbiting, but in the magic guys, I mean, like, <laughs> it seems like you guys kind of like hang out and, and really yeah, do each we, other. Yeah, we do. And a lot of us do. Um, whether it's it's just over Skype or, uh, you know, the texts or something. Like I text with Tyler quite a bit. You know, him and I are messaging on, uh, on Facebook a bit and we'll sit and chat about what we're working on, share each other's photos. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. And, and uh yeah and you guys all, talk, are you guys allowed to talk about your ndas with each other is that something yes. that's allowed okay that's that's if cool you're talking with another magic artist we're allowed to do that okay um, that's that must be good to, yeah yeah because i was like th that would be tough to sit on something i mean especially if it's really cool uh you know but i mean it's also would be tough to be like you know <laughs> destroyed for violating it's a you know yeah the it. wizard is pretty lenient about that like we we i have a, a group of friends that are all we've all either done magic or are currently doing magic and um it's our crit group and we'll if we're having trouble i'll send over an image and say hey lars what is what do you think you know is there something that's bothering you because you kind of get in your own thing your your tunnel vision and you don't really see the big picture so um having another artist eye who's maybe really good at something in particular is is helpful to say hey you know that head looks a little bit big or you know i would say change the gesture slightly and then try to get more dynamic or whatever colors or anything um it, it's fun having that group to bounce ideas off of yeah you couldn't ask for a more um like apt group of people to give you art critiques you know what i mean no um, yeah, like, yeah how are you gonna find that um it's um ixalice diviner is it is that your daughter? I'm curious because I saw a picture of you and her together and I thought that might be her in the painting. Is, is that the one where she's kneeling and there's a dinosaur in the back? Yes. Yeah. It's okay. a little, a little young, a young, younger girl. It looks like maybe. Yeah. No, she, that was, that was not my daughter. I don't, 
I don't think I've been able to use her. She's a little too young still. She's only nine right now. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I'm using her actually in an illustration I'm working on now to cover for a buddy of mine. Um, and he was kind enough to put in the description of mother and daughter. So I, uh, I, I, I use them as reference. So she's in this new one I'm working on. Um, but I haven't had a chance to use her in a magic card yet. Yeah, you're right. Nine years old is, is a trickier cast way to cast. That's a trickier thing to cast someone in because there, there's not a lot of children in magic. And if there are children, it's usually something you probably wouldn't want to see your own daughter. And you know what I mean? Like there's a sometimes <laughs> yeah. a kid getting kidnapped or, or, you know, but it could be cool to do her as like a vampire that just. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I've painted her. I've done portrait work of her. Um, but yeah, I, as she gets older, I'm sure I'll be using her. I use my wife a lot. She's almost any of the females in my work. It's almost always her. That's um, cool. I try to change it up, you know, so maybe I'll grab a face from online or I'll shoot another model for the face. But um, my wife's willing to put up with a lot of my <laughs> requests. <laughs> That's funny. It's like, can you post? She's like, oh, OK. Yeah. Um, what would you say which which of the sets do you think stylistically is the most in line with your own hmm. that's a good question uh it's hard to say i really enjoy working the gamut i mean we did uh, i think ixalan was probably one of the most fun sets i've ever worked on um theros was great um i don't know really i mean it's all it's all pretty it fits pretty good with what i love um if there was one set Peric tutor that you did what was the yeah. what was the inspiration behind that because it's just like this i mean he's literally staring at you just like mm -hmm. you're gonna tutor you're gonna tutor now and it's <laughs> uh yeah he's he was it was a description the, the art director wanted him looking at the camera um and looking kind of angry like you had just stepped in on and disturb him um uh, in the middle of his work and that piece was actually done for Isalon. Uh, but somehow it got canceled from that set. And I think it was going to be one of those masterpiece cards. Yeah, it's like a judge and, promo they did. I think. Yeah, well, they turned it into a judge promo later. So it, it had been done for Ixalan for the masterpiece, but the masterpiece stuff got it, it got axed. And then um, I kept bugging her because I knew the card was good. And I was like, are you going to find a spot for it? Are you going to find a spot for it? <laughs> and eventually she did. She found a spot in the judge from was, and that was, I was so thankful for that. Because then it, the other thing for me is selling the original work. If I'm sitting on a piece like that, that's potential, you know, yeah. good money. So mm -hmm. I'm like, can we please find, <laughs> we please sell this so we, we, or please get this out so I can sell this painting. Because otherwise right. you can't show the piece, right? We're not allowed to, to uh, share right. the uh, work. That's true. And, um, and what when you were talking about one of the sales that happened for you that you didn't realize that a card that you had like you thought that the card was just going to be sort of uh pushed off and, and then somebody from the game came and said oh no this card's really really like good and you had no mm -hmm. idea that that was something that could happen do you remember what card that was that did it oh. was it um that was thoughtsies okay wow so did you have i mean did you ever play magic when you were younger or is that just something that no. you just sort of never got into yeah, I never got into it. Um, wish I had. Uh, I, I I do enjoy. I know how to play now. Like I know the basics, anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have enough time to really get into it because it's just it's so complex and it can go yeah. on forever. Um, yeah. So I never played it. So I didn't know when I got that assignment what it was. And um, as I was doing it, I feel like the artwork's okay. It's not one of my best pieces of artwork. Um, had I known the card, I might have like sweated over it even more. I don't know. <laughs> but um you know the card came out fine it's it's a it's a, it's a decent illustration and um the, the card came out and um i got like a dozen emails right away like hey is the original available it's like wait a minute what's going on here so i emailed like uh, zach stella who's now an art director um and some of the other people i know that played and i said hey what's going on with this card is this is this a good card <laughs> yeah. um, and they're like dude yeah Thought season is pretty good. Yeah, so. it's uh, like the turn one on arena, uh, like always. Uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 brutal. I mean, it's just it's enough to make you just want to walk away. You're like, okay, you, you can see my <laughs> see my entire yeah. hand. I'm done. I'm gonna. Yeah. Um. So that's, I guess it's that's, bittersweet, you know. If I'm, if I'm walking around a convention or something, there's somebody. Are you the thoughtsies guy? Like, yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder which um, what card do you think the artwork was 
one of the ones that you're proud of that it was put on a less than stellar card? Ooh, good question. Um, hmm. Like yeah, I, you've got a lot of really good ones like that, that I look at, like Ordeal of Heliod is really fascinating. It really does have that Frazetta feel to it. Uh, That's the one with the guy swinging a sword at the Minotaur? Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. assuming it's a Heliod too, because he's such a dick. And, and <laughs> yeah, and, so I did enjoy that piece. The art director really liked that one. He liked the dynamic feel of it. In fact, I think he used it in the, the style guide that year. It's like a, look, this is kind of what we're going for in Theros. Yeah, it's great. Uh, but there, yeah, Theros. Um, so that one was, was probably one. I can't. I've done 120 some odd cards for them, and you kind of lose track of minus a few that are, are pretty pretty strong. Um, hmm. I cannot think of one off the top of my head. I apologize. It, it's okay. If you think of one afterwards, we'll flash it in here. Um, you can let me know in the email. But um, okay. the I, you know I will say that your token zombie is probably my favorite zombie. Oh yeah. Oh, I like, appreciate that. That yes. thing is just awful. I mean, <laughs> that, what was there? What happened to it? You think? I mean, because it's just like waterlogged and it's sort of like yeah. flappy down there. I mean, what would do you think that that zombie went through? And came back? I mean, because it's so a <laughs> uh, such an unsexy, horrible, terrible zombie. And uh, yeah, that was it was crazy that one too because it got reprinted. I don't know. A dozen times and, re and yeah. all those sets and um and and for whatever reason they don't credit it on the site that you don't you like if you yeah. put in my name and then it, it doesn't show that one but then when people realize at a show or something oh you're the, you did the zombie wow okay and they'll plot their you know five or six zombies and how many signed their zombies um as far as like the illustration goes i was mainly just trying to get a really um Kiroskiro kind of feel to it where it was very mm -hmm. lots of shadows are just dropped and there's not a lot of information um and then he's slowly coming into the light um Phil Hale he's one of my favorite artists and he he was a big inspiration on that piece as far as his work goes because he does a lot of that kind of feel um, where he kind of really highlights the anatomy and the details and the lid set in the lit sections and then uh, drops off information in the shadows that's that's he's, he's, interesting yeah because that yeah. is what's happening it's like these pieces of his like is you can see the shambling of him of him <laughs> or of it i guess you can't really uh coming at you uh and uh it's just uh it's it's great i mean i can see why it's reprinted um and you know it is a bummer they don't put that up on the scryfall sites it's like ah, yeah it, tokens are okay. tokens are people too i mean <laughs> <laughs> but um so I guess my 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 few more final questions um that I'll have for you uh well actually three more because I do I want to ask about the maquettes uh how how do you get good at that and because uh, between you and Victor uh from I learned what maquettes were the other week and I'm like all of a sudden it's, these people are just doing maquettes mm -hmm. for the creatures that they created I mean what 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 do you, how do you do that I mean you just learn that in art class is that something that happens i never really did sculpting in art class i think once you have a, a basic understanding of form especially drawing it um you really start to understand it on another level and, and uh. i feel like sculpting is a lot easier when um you have that foundation of drawing and understand how to render form really um there's probably techniques and stuff that I, I, have no, I, I don't sculpt all that much, but um, I love doing it. It's just so time consuming. Um, but there's probably a bunch of techniques I could pick up. In fact, I think when I find like a little bit of, of rest, there's, a, there's a, a, a sculptor, Spider Zero, if you guys follow him on Instagram, guy's phenomenal. And uh, he, he runs workshops. So my, my goal is to maybe take a workshop with him. Um, oh, um, nice. Spider Zero, I'll check it out. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, those oh. things. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a, another completely a separate form of art, but it's mm -hmm. it's insane when you see some of the stuff that that is built uh, just from looking at uh, stuff online. Um, but your stuff's really cool. I mean, the Quakebringer guy is really awesome. Yeah, I mean, right here. Like, wait, oh yeah, <laughs> oh nice. Which um, do you have any other of your which other maquettes did you end up making for? Um. I've got one other one, but I can't show you yet because it's the card has been released. I probably could show you, but just in case, I'm, I'm not going to. Yeah, I, it's okay. I I would not. Uh, I wouldn't ask. Uh, I wouldn't ask if uh, 
if that was the case. I just yeah, thought maybe there was really, some older. It's a super rough maquette too. I needed it mainly just to get the big shapes that I could light. Um, but for the most part, it's it's really loose and, and yeah, I can't put a lot of time into it because you know my process is long enough getting from start to finish in an illustration. If I add a whole nother couple days of maquette building, that really digs into my time. So yeah. I only do it up to a point where I really need it. Even the Quake Bringer is, he's pretty rough. If you look closely on him, he doesn't have a lot of detail and he's kind of, you know, he's just the big shapes. But I knew I wanted to paint one of those, those guys. And um, uh, when I got that Quake Bringer, the thing was a great opportunity to really get that extra information I needed out of the maquette. It's interesting though, you, you do seem to be uh, getting more out there per capita than you did in the past. Uh, I think that you had three in, in Ikoria and that, that's, uh, that's a lot considering how complex the creatures are. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I had also like sort of noticed is that with your, um, with your animals, it's just like that. Do you, do you, how do you manage to, to create like say a dragon and then do different variants of a dragon is something that is a fictional character, uh, you know, how do you do that without it becoming redundant? I mean, what sort of techniques do you use? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So a lot of it comes down to style guides. You know, you'll, magic has a certain look for their dragons in a particular set that reflects what that set's gonna look like, you know. Um, but, and there's times where if I'm doing one for my own, a lot of times I'll, um, or if I'm asked to just go ahead and design a dragon, um, I'll use nature oftentimes. I'll find different creatures and animals that I can sort of mesh into the shapes of the dragons so they're somewhat relatable to the audience because if it's too abstract I feel like the audience can't relate. They don't really know what they're looking at. Um, so you need those little hints of like you know well this is a ram's horn or whatever mm -hmm. and um, people can kind of see see how that works. Um, so a lot of times it might also be silhouette. A lot of times I'm thinking about the silhouette of the, of the, uh, the dragon in the composition, um, if I want it to feel less threatening, maybe there's less spikes on it. If I want it to feel, you know, evil, then you know, more spikes, bigger horns, um, thicker limbs, things like that. There's little shape designs I can put into the to the creatures to make them feel more like how they need to feel. Full disclosure, I feel like the version of your piece that you did where you didn't include the arms on the dragon as a mistake is better than okay. the, I think, I mean, I think it is, I mean, maybe that's gauche of me to say that, but you know, who am I to say, but I'm also, I'm also curious, I'm like, well, you know, it's a multiverse, I mean, dragons, you know, can have arms here and there, I, I, I just was fascinated by that, that it, it was it was corrected and and it's awesome that you were able to correct it and make it look like that was still a thing because I wouldn't have known that was a tough other one man yeah that was tough because I did it it was going to print that card was going to print I got an uh, email from the director he's like dude drop everything I need you to do this and um he said I, I don't know why I approved this but it all of our dragons have four or, or six limbs I guess four leg arms legs and uh, uh, the wings um he says I need you to put arms on this dragon I was like oh my gosh that's so I did it and it, I, I mainly just I worked on trying to keep the arms within the silhouette because I still wanted to keep the silhouette somewhat the way it was. Um, and I managed to make it work and it, it looks fairly seamless. Um, and he was super grateful. So I, I think uh, that was a good way in, in helping to build our relationship. That was an earlier card too. So um, to help kind of build a, a good relationship with the, the art directors at Wizards and um, just doing my job. Well, good. I mean, it's good for you. Now, the the last one that I like to ask, and I, I know you can discuss what you'll be doing um, as far as upcoming sets. So how many pieces are you currently working on for upcoming magic sets right now? For magic, just one. Yeah. Just but one? We've got stuff. So we just got an email about what our availability is for the next six months. I think they like to try and snag the artist as far as they can, um, or at least no, less, like maybe less next three months. Um, so I like to try and snag the artists in for those 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 sets when they can. I I give Magic like ninety eight percent of my schedule just because the brand is great. I love mm -hmm. working with everyone there. It's, 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 we've got a, a really good flow and how things work. Deadlines, you know, are here. They, they, everything's so organized and easy for my schedule. Plus the original sales is is gangbusters right now, and um, that's they're a huge part of my um, my block time I allow for in my schedule. Um, so only one this set because I'm working on a cover for a friend and then um, a, a book cover, 
a book cover. Nice. And then um, I think when the next sets come out, I, you know, I we'll see. I've got, I've got like two, I think two or three per set, maybe more. Um, so we'll we'll just see. Yeah, I was curious. Um, what happened with Corset Twenty Twenty One? That's the only thing I think that's the only set that you haven't been in for the past like since since you started. Uh, what was the the reason behind that? There's just so many sets that come out that you'll. I mean, I'm, I'm working on Magic all the time. Yeah, but there was sets that we're working on that are overlapping as they're being made. So right now, there's like three sets going on, and there's only so many artists. They may not use you for every single set. Um, so it's changed mainly on their side, the fact that they're doing a lot more than one set at a time. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah. uh, did you ever, and I guess the last one was, did you ever, um, you talked about how you were developing your own IP though. Uh, is that something that you still are interested in doing? <laughs> Absolutely. Just, I, again, finding the time to do it. Um, there's other things going on in my life that I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to, level things out a bit it's just been so jumpy there's so many things going on um it's not fair to my daughter or my wife and i'm really trying to back off a little bit so that unfortunately has to be one of the things that i'm not really focusing on at all right um, yeah but down the road i'm hoping you know maybe when my daughter leaves the house or something college I'll, I'll yeah college food. time yep empty nest syndrome that's how you feel it <laughs> yeah. well um i thank you very much for your time i appreciate it yeah. and it was it was great talking to you today yeah, likewise. Who else is with me on Lucas getting a planeswalker? I think there's something to that idea. And so I'm putting it out there to the universe. Maybe I should start a vision board, you know? Like that idea from the book, The Secret. I haven't read it myself, but if I know the secret of the secret, it's hardly a secret, is it? You comment and like below if you'd like. I live for those. Whenever I get a notice like that or a comment, I just get shot up with vampire dopamine. I love it that much. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you again for watching. And until next time, like a waffle cone purchased at an ice cream parlor, I got a scoop.